Hi, I tried Padlet out on the iPad, and it, on the iPad it's installed as an app rather than just going to the internet version. I mean, it is on the internet, but it's a separate app. And I strongly suggest that you use the just the plain old internet version because that way the students will see the same view of it what, no matter what device they're on, even if they're on their phones. Um, now, to get to the internet version on the iPad, all you do is you open Safari, which because these iPads don't have Chrome on them, but it does the exact same thing. You'd open Safari, which just basically is a web browser, gets you onto the internet, and you would search up top for Padlet.com. And from here on in, what you're seeing on the iPad will be identical to what I'm seeing on the laptop, which is what I'm recording on right now. So this is not the best, most useful thing I've just done because I just realized I'm already signed in to Padlet. So I'm going to sign out because I want to show you exactly what you would see. And so it's off to the right of the screen, but I've just clicked on log out. So you'll, and they'll miss me. That's nice. So you would, oh, just, just, I just want to show them what they'd see when they go to Padlet.com on their iPad. It would look like this. Then you'd get your students up here to log in. But before, if you, hang on, jumping back a step, assuming what we're aiming to do is for the teacher or one person in the class to make a Padlet and for everyone else to contribute to it, the teacher, first of all, would need to log in. So I'm going to go through how you do that now. And I'm going to log in with Google. And that's just because I know that the password's saved on my laptop, except if you were doing this on the iPad in Safari, you'd have to type in your password but I'm already signed in on my laptop so it's done it for me so now I'm signed in just using my Google my school Google account and what I'm seeing is a whole lot of garbage here that you won't be seeing because this is just because I've been using it in classes so these are all the padlets that I've previously used with classes but when you just log into Padlet the first few times you won't see a whole lot of stuff it'll be quite empty then you go up here to new Padlet and you hit that bright pink button up there that says new Padlet and it has given me a default background and it's kind of cute it gives you a different one every time but oh uh, you know what I'm going to just shrink my window because the right hand side keeps getting cut off so I'm just going to make it that size good so you can see my whole screen um so it's given me the default settings and then it's opened this little window here for me where I can edit those default settings. I just want to show you the other view of it. If for some reason you don't have your little settings up there, you'd click on the little wee cog. You open that and it gives you things you can change, like, such as the title of your Padlet, which is usually the question. So what do you think about um, the color blue or whatever you're doing in class? And then we have the subtitle, which is please, oh, spelling's always handy, please um, give me one word to describe it. Or you could say please give me a sentence, or please give me a photo, or any old thing, or you can leave that one blank. Now, the layout, at the, we're scrolling down that little side menu. At the moment, the layout, I'm happy with freeform, but if it gets unwieldy and crazy and messy once the students are writing on it, I can change it to stream, which is a nice straight line, or grid, which is nice tidy boxes. I can change my background wallpaper to something. If I click on more, I'll get hundreds of different wallpapers, such as that. Oh, ouch, headache. Okay, let's go for something a bit calmer than that. A bit too early in the morning for that kind of current. Oh no, that's just boring. Okay. Um, uh, sometimes I do this in front of the students and they love, depending on the class, they love interjecting and telling me what background they'd like me to use on their Padlet. Um, and okay, I'm going to save the wallpaper to get back to that menu there. Pardon me. Um, I can also have a little symbol that pops up on the top left of my Padlet. We'll click on one just to see what it does. But again, if you click on more, you'll get more. Whatever you click on in that symbol icon box is what will show up here. Not that much point really, but it's cute and it grabs the kids' attention so that they read the question. Um, scrolling down, the next thing to worry about, oh, the really handy thing is that you can edit the address because 
as it is now, if I was all ready to go to share my Padlet with my students, the address I'd have to write up on the board or email to them or however I want to give them the address to go to would be https slash slash padlet.com slash Ms. Ronald because that's my username in Padlet, but yours, it'll, it just makes one for you. Um, and then h7xi, etc. lots of letters and numbers. And that's hard to harder for the kids to remember, so I'm just going to type in... Um, the color blue just i make up a name for the padlet that's easy to tell the kids and i'll say to them go to padlet.com slash miss ronald slash the color blue and so if they're quick they can type that in without even having to look at what's on the board then i'm going to go to save and that makes whatever i've just done in this window apply and go live kind of thing then I'm going to go close so I've changed the settings of my Padlet now when the students go to add to it all they're going to do is double click on it and write a message um, they'll have a little heading and they'll have somewhere they can write the story they can also add a short video clip a link attachment picture photo voice recording whatever they want more on that later but for now we need to share it with the kids so I did just go on about how you could write the link on the board. You could also click on, hang on, oh, privacy. Okay, at the moment it's not public, so I need to definitely click that to make it public. And I could go save again just to make sure that's updated. Then share and export and embed. I'm going to share it with the students. Uh, the easiest way I find, like there's lots of options, like say if I had a Facebook group I could stick it on there, but um, I could either email them the link or just up here copy link to this Padlet. So having clicked on that, it didn't look like it did anything, but I'm hoping that on the on my invisible clipboard now is the link to the Padlet. I'll just test that out. Yes, there it is. So that's the link the kids need to go to. And I'm just going to copy that and paste it into my classroom page or an email or just write it on the board, whatever way you want to give it to them. So now the students have the link. I'm going to show you what it would look like from their perspective. So this is the end of it from the teacher's perspective and it's ready to give the kids to get their feedback. I suppose the only other thing the teacher would want to come back in for later is to export, hang on, export their findings if they wanted to keep a record of it. Often in my classes it's just used for getting ideas and the students read the ideas there and then. But if I did need to take what they've entered and use it for something else I then could go export and I could save it as a PDF and or print it out or email it to someone or summarize it somehow that kind of thing but for now we're ready to give it to the students so I'd need to log out and this little dot over here is my login thingy it's made me a picture I didn't make that picture and I'm going to go where's the log out button I'm not seeing it Okay, somewhere you'd think there would be a log out button. I wonder if it's hiding behind there. No, not really. Okay, I'll go home. So I'm going back to my Padlet home screen, I assume. Yes, slowly. And surely now I can log out. Yes, log out. And I'm just on any old Google page there. Okay, and I'm putting in the that link that we copied earlier that the teacher has written up on the board and it takes me to Padlet and it's there's no little circle up here. What? Oh no, that's who made it. So now it knows I'm not logged into Padlet anymore. So your students don't need to be logged into Padlet to comment on your Padlet. All they need is the link that you've sent them and they can also type something. They could also chuck in a photo, which is quite fun always. I think I'll just go take a photo. This is where the kids get a bit carried away and all excited and they go hi and takes a minute to load and you go okay and it puts their photo in the Padlet. So always the first time I have a class if I think they're going to go crazy and use the Padlet thing now of course I want to log in now that I've logged in again once and logged out again another time etc etc. At least now I know my password. Okay back to our school teacher login my school teacher login okay so back to my oh yo yo padlets home and skimming through the ones i've made somewhere there's one oh this one called silly photos that's what i do the first time the kids get into padlet 
and I let them, oh, that's interesting, all sorts of carry on there. Some of them are photos they've taken themselves. I let them use my webcam so they, because they really wanted their own photos in there. Some of them are just pictures off the internet. Some more sensible examples are um, the little, things I can print in 3D. Oh, that was one I just made to practice with on the iPad. We don't want that one. We want, oh, look, all my other padlets actually do show up there. There's, uh, what do you like best about computers? That's one, all things we could 3D print. That one's one I did yesterday with my class. So they have put in there all of their ideas of things that they could 3D print. And then they had to go through other people's ideas and pick the best three to investigate further. And that, in summary, is firstly how the teacher creates the Padlet, secondly how the student accesses the Padlet, remember just by the link, don't let me confuse you by trying to log in, thirdly a couple of ideas of how you might use it in classes, and I'm sure you're sick of hearing my voice by now, so see you later.